if you would have noticed earlier, the theme for today was flashing at some points. And what I intend to share with you on today is the power of praise. Usually, during the month of January, I, by the grace of God, try to set a stage that, as a body, we are able to focus and continue throughout the year. And today wraps up about four Sundays that I would have been sharing. Heavenly Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. I'm not going to go over the text that was read earlier, but I would simply draw your attention to verse 25 of that text, which simply says to us, around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. The King James probably would say, singing praises to God and so on. In Psalm 100, we are told to enter his gates with thanksgiving, to go into his courts with praise, give thanks. Thanks to him and praise his name. In Psalm 150, my friends, we are told, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We are told to sing praises to the Lord. We are told to praise God in his sanctuary. We are told to praise him for his mighty works. We are told to praise him with love and harp. We are to praise him with tambourine and dancing. We are to praise him with the clash of cymbals, etc. And he concludes that everything that has breath, praise the Lord. I want to tell you this morning that the drummer is going to praise God on the drums. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. The keyboardist is going to praise God on keys. Amen. And if he had some more, Sister Gail get the symbol. We are to praise him with tambourine. All right. All right. We are to praise him with dance. <laughs> oh, man. You see, sometimes, sometimes we make excuses for not praising God. So you know what we say? I don't behave that way. Not me soul. Good old Bajan like, not me boy. Should I start to dance? Should I start to sing? Should I start to wave my hands? They are going to conclude, you're going mad. But let me say to you this morning, that the reason why we praise God is because of what he has done for us. So if God has not done anything for you, then you have difficulty praising him. But when you recognize that God has done something for you, great things for you, you praise him. 
You see, you see, we have to understand that when we decide to praise God, we should not be concerned with who is looking at us. Because you know why? You don't know what God has done for me. So if I choose to run and skip and hop and jump and prance, it is because of what God has done for me. May I suggest to us today that there's a distinct difference between praise and worship. You see, praise is the joyful recounting of all that God has done for us. It is closely intertwined with thanksgiving. So, so, so you have praise and thanksgiving. You have praise and worship. And the responsibility of the worship team, the responsibility of the worship leader, the responsibility of the musicians, etc. The responsibility of every single person is to help us to experience praise and worship and thanksgiving. You see, praise, like I said, we are simply rejoicing because of what God has done. So you know what? From January 1 to January 31, we are rejoicing because God has given us another opportunity to praise him. We are giving God praise because you know what? To this day, he has still provided for us. And I want to say to us that even as we praise God, we also praise people. You know that's difficult for some to do. Because it is easy for persons to be critical of things. I remember <laughs> a man was placed into pastoral ministry. This man was very critical of ministers and I'm telling you he last he lasted six months maybe less but six months is grace and he came back and he said I have a fresh appreciation for pastors it's more than preaching my friends we ought to be able to praise persons if you do a good job so 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 let me let me let me praise the media team let me give some praise to the musicians but you know the temptation is to ask for a little a little piece more but i ain't gonna do that let me praise the worship team and, 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 and don't be vexed with me. But please permit me to make special mention of my wife. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, you see, no, why, why did that? You got to understand, I go over here. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. My friends, we are told in scripture. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. It is directed to God, yes, but it's also directed to each other. So we ought to be a people, if we're going to be stronger together, to be able to give praise to each other. It's a different kind. Um, your sanitation worker, you know, um, you, if, if, Somebody does something on a regular basis for you and so on. But you see, worship now. So you have on the one hand, praise. Which is the joyful recounting of all that God has done for us. 
And then we have worship. And worship comes from a different place within our spirits. Worship, my friends, should be reserved for God alone. I know people create gods. But I'm submitting to us today that worship is for God alone. Worship is the act of losing self in the adoration of another. You see, praise, as I said earlier, can be a part of worship. But worship goes beyond praise. Worship gets to the heart of who we are. So if you're going to truly worship and so on, when worship is really taking place, we must let go of our self-worship. We must be willing to humble ourselves before God, surrender every part of our lives to his control and adore him for who he is. And not just what he has done. In capsule form, worship is a lifestyle. Not just an occasional activity. So when we come to the house of God, my friends, we come to praise God. We come to worship God. We come to give God thanks. And as we praise God, we are praising him for who he is. We are praising him and we are worshiping him for all that he has done. No wonder in John chapter 4 we read, God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We are told in scripture that if you don't praise God, he would allow Jesus himself said, the rocks, the very rocks will cry out. Just as worship is intertwined, just as praise, sorry, is intertwined with thanksgiving, worship, my friends, is intertwined with surrender. So worship, therefore, is an attitude of the heart. You see, a person can go through the outward motions, but still not be worshiping. But hear this. God sees the heart, and he knows, and he desires, and he deserves sincere, heartfelt praise and worship. The text that was presented to us reveals an interesting account of praise. And it is from there that I've drawn my theme, the power of praise. The Apostle Paul was on his second missionary journey. And as we peruse the text, we realize that the Apostle Paul would have received a call to come over to Macedonia and to help. We also see in the text that the Apostle Paul would have been forbidden to share the word in some places. The Spirit prevented him from sharing in some jurisdictions. It is while at Philippi, or it was while at Philippi, that the action heightens. And the first point that I want to make to us today is that Paul was journeying to a place of prayer. We need to understand that based on the custom, based on the tradition, based on the order of that day, it took 10 men to constitute a synagogue. So, so Paul, as was his practice, just like Jesus Christ, would seek to find a synagogue to be able to share the word. Regrettably, when the apostle Paul went looking for a place of prayer, 
a synagogue, a place where ten men should have been present. There were no men. You know, last week I said, when we dealt with prisoner escapes from death row, and I went to the song that Stetson Wiltshire, known as Plastic Bag, when he said, can't find me, brother. I search every dance hall, kingdom hall, etc. Can't find me, brother. Paul went searching for men and could not find men. But hear this. He encountered a woman by the name of Lydia who was a seller of purple. And we are told without going into all the details that this woman was receptive to the good news and her entire household they were saved you miss a moment to say amen but anyway <laughs> she said to Paul and them if you have found me worthy come to my house so Paul journeyed he, 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 he was looking for a place of prayer and like I said you, you just needed 10 men. Only 10. But he found a woman. And that entire household. The lady and her entire household were saved. That's one woman. I want to suggest that Paul. My second point is Paul and Silas and the others experienced a problem they experience a problem with the second woman and you can say lord have mercy the second woman we are told this second woman was marching around behind the apostle paul and the others and saying these men are servants of the most high god do you recall that now i know that some modern day preachers, if they were in crusade, and they had somebody saying, oh, these men are servants of the Most High God. Man, I can see them parading. But let me tell you, the spirit of the gift of discernment was evident in Paul's life. And he recognized that this woman was demon possessed. Sounding good, sounding correct, but had a demon. And that is where the tables turn. <laughs> because this woman was a servant girl, a slave girl, however you want to put it. And we are told that because her owners could no longer get profit. Because that's, they were using her for profit. They stirred up the people. They stirred up the people. And they decided to badly beat Paul Silas. This is my third point. <laughs> they had Paul and Silas thrown into prison. And this is where we get the power of praise. <laughs> Imagine the scripture says at midnight. <laughs> now I had to look at, at midnight. And they tell me that at midnight is the conclusion of one day and the beginning of another. So at the beginning of a new day, Paul and Silas began to sing praises unto almighty God because they knew that something was going to happen we are told that as they sang praises and prayed etc the prisoners listened that, 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 that's interesting you know 
Listen to me. People want to see how we respond in adversity, not prosperity. Because when everything is going well, we are on top of the world. But from the time the ladder is pulled from under us, I ain't going to church no more. I doubt with that. Let me tell you something. And I want you to hear me well. When you come to the house of God, you don't only come to receive, you come to give. So when you're saying, oh, I went to church and I ain't getting nothing. What you bring to the table? Because I'm sure that if you were present to praise God, if you were present to worship God, if you were present to give God thanks, you're going to get something. My friends, at midnight, at midnight, the ushering in of a new day, Paul and Silas began to sing praises unto Almighty God. Hear me, hear me. I want to say to us that praise, praise, genuine praise, real praise, authentic praise, loosens us from the weight of the cares of this world. Listen to me. If you think about all that is going on, you would stop in the house and never come out. But you know what? We serve a God. Sister Calendar, we serve a God. That when everything seems to give way around us, God comes through for us. That is why we should not only praise him when things are good, we should praise him when things are bad. And let me tell you, that is the most difficult. To be able to praise God. You imagine you're praising God and you've got a saint. <laughs> Listen to me. I have said repeatedly that I don't only bring theory, I bring practical as well. And I can tell you, my friends, one day, recently, not from here. So don't start thinking and wondering who. I receive a call. Hey, Jeff. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> How we can connect, man? I said, you tell me. I said, just tell me. Can we meet at such and such a point? I said, no problem. Give me a time. X time. I said, fine. When I got there, church, when I got there, Sir Ryan, I got an envelope. I got some chicken. Lord, have mercy. I got some vegetables. Then I'm talking about praising God. And that was in the height of the pandemic, etc. And I'm going to tell you what was happening during that period. But the God that I serve, the God that I praise, he came through for me. I was able to eat. My family, we were able to eat, my friends. I am saying to us that praise loosens us from the chains and the cares of this world. No wonder the writer said that we can cast all of our cares upon him because he cares for us. Let me say to us, not only does praise loosen us from the weight and cares of this world, but let me suggest to us as well that praise lift our spirits.
That old chorus, I was down in the valley, way down in the valley, when he heard my feeble cry. Listen, there are two radio stations that I tune into. You think you can name them? 92.9 for brass stacks. From 12, from 10 to 2. Monday through Friday. So it program. One is number one and one is number two. And the second one is 97.5 FM. The only, way, the only way the radio shifts is maybe if one of the children shift it. But 97.5 and 92.9. And this morning, as I was making my way here, I, 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 I said to Sister D, I said, boy, let me tell you something. This, whoever put this set together, they have done a wonderful job. Because... They had Brooklyn Tabernacle, and, and the Brooklyn Tab is one of my favorite groups because it has persons who would have come through different experiences, etc., and they're now able to praise God because God Himself would have delivered them. I am saying to us, praise, lift our spirits. So, you know what the chorus is? When trouble in your life, Sing praises. For God is our king. Over everything. Sing praises. Sing praises unto God. Sing praises. My friends, I want to suggest to us today. That not only does praise loosen us. From the weight and cares of this world. Not only does praise lift our spirits, but praise open an outlet for God to respond. At midnight, at midnight, Paul and Silas in prison, they're singing praises unto God. I told you, just like Peter, they had them in the dungeon according to the text. They had them secured. But we are told. That as Paul and Silas. They sang their praises. That there was an earthquake. A rumbling. Within the prison. And the doors were open. The chains fell off. All the prisoners were loose. So when you praise God, you don't only praise God for you. Check these men walking out. We are told that the jailer drew his sword and was about to kill himself. And Paul simply said, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Hear me out. Hear me out. When there's authentic praise, when we really worship, you see all the things that people are trying to do to get people to come to Christ? When we get it right, the Bible says that the jailer asks, what must I do to be saved? I want to say to you today that when we praise God, when we worship God, he responds and it results in the salvation of others. See, don't think people are stupid. Because we want to be one way in church on Sunday and another way on Monday. But it don't work so because people don't see through you and me. So there must be consistency. We are told that the jailer, he and his household, they were saved. And interestingly enough, the same man that was responsible for placing them in prison 
It's the same man who bandaged and cleaned them up. Lord, have mercy. I really, I really wanted to work today in terms of us praising God. I really wanted to do it. And I know that some of us, like I said earlier, say not me. I ain't emotional. But if you ain't emotional, you ain't living. Because even God himself was emotional. Listen to me. But we are emotional beings. You understand what I'm saying? When we are watching sports... You, you, give me some cricketers. When, when, when Shakira Selman takes six wickets, you think you can hold on, Sister Glendine? <laughs> Listen to me. So don't tell me that that is how you are. Because when you are. Listen to me. Any of you with a child or children that do sports, before the stadium was being repaired under some repairs etc you would have been there and you go John go you can get there early because you want to make sure that from the time she kicks out the blocks you see the first move huh are you gonna tell me that the god that we serve that has done more for us than any human being living we got difficulty praising him but thank God we wrong real wrong one of those songs said give me some room man give me some room let me praise my God and I'm saying to us today I'm saying to us today just as the scripture says that God he inhabits the praises of his people give me another roll there on the drums please let's praise God with the drums come on now come on now give me something give me something and church you are free to praise the Lord praise God Come on now, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Our help, our help, our help. It comes from him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You are. are the source of my strength yeah you are the source of my joy I lift I lift my hands in total praise total praise to you William Murphy says in a song that he penned, praise is what I do. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. I lift 
my hands in praise. Praise Him is who I am. I will praise Him while I can. I will bless Him at all times. And the refrain of that says, I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. I vow to praise you. I'll praise you whether happy or sad. I'll praise you. I trust that as a church, as a people of God, we would recognize the power of praise. I trust that we as a people of God, we would recognize that we are stronger together when we praise God. I want to suggest to us today that every time the restrictions are lifted, every time there is, we ought to find ourselves in the house of God simply to praise and worship Him. Don't give me no, 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 no monkey story because I know, I know. When you're home, it is like you're watching a picture. You can say that's true. Because the reality is, when we are sitting down in front of the screen, we don't get a pen. We, 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 we are just spectators. But when we come to the house of God, you imagine when, when, when sister Eiffel start to praise God and sister Gazelle start to praise God and all the church starts to praise God. You could imagine what kind of thing would take place. Not, not, not looking and saying, we, we, what happened there? Every praise, every praise team, get ready. And I want to say to us. This is your opportunity to lift your hands to praise God from day one. Matter of fact, run it, run it. From 2020 to now, we are still in the land of the living. Some would have gone and that's sad. We grieve, but we are still here. And every time I open my eyes, I'm going to praise God. Have you ever been driving and a song start, started to play. And let me tell you something. You simply start to worship God. And let me say to you. That it is only God's mercies. Because sometimes you shut your eye. But it's got to open them quick. Man listen to me church. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. If God has done something for you. Man listen to me. Praise him. The mere fact that he saved you. Is reason for you to praise him. And let me conclude by saying. That as we decide to be stronger together in praise. We have to be able to love each other. You know that's a choice. We can choose to love. Or choose not to love. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. You probably are saying, but pastor, we didn't have the congregational prayer earlier. I know. Because this is the time for us to pour out our hearts. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Praise God. You have done it again. They had given up. They had said, I wouldn't make it, but I'm alive. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise as we stand together. And I'm always quick to point out, we can, we, can, we can assemble. We have the distancing, we have the capacity, we have the space that you can distance, you can praise God, you can tell him, you can tell him. And I want to say to us that, 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 that the praise, it loosens us from the chains. You imagine, you imagine all the way. So it starts income tax this tax the next tax lord have mercy could you imagine could you imagine rice gone up flour gone up sugar gone up lord lord what next you can imagine jeez stop right and you're wondering you're oh man listen to me 
when you start to give God some praise, the rice gone up, the flour gone up, but you're eating. You understand what I'm saying? You understand? You understand? You understand? You, you, you lose you lose a, a loved one, you lose a loved one, you lose another loved one, and, and, and you're wondering, God, who next? Who next? But you know what? God is there underneath, and I'm saying to us, as we together, praise Almighty God, as we together, praise Almighty God, you can see the hand of God encouraging how I make it. Boy, I only make it because of God. I've only made it because of God. Oh, oh. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise.